Well, you know, in all, in all fairness to, uh, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, he made very clear that the position of his government is that it continues to support the establishment of a Palestinian state. And that is not the position that I argue in my book, and that's fine. Ari supports it as well, and I completely respect his, his right to do so. I personally think it's very dangerous, but that doesn't mean that isn't a reasonable and perfectly legitimate position to have either for an individual or for the government of Israel. Um, I do think, though, you know, that it's important you praised Netanyahu for coming out, and he did. He made significant uh, statements and significant concessions uh, in order to convince mainly uh, President Obama uh, of his seriousness uh, in, in moving forward in negotiations. And we see that um, he got nothing. You see that not only did he get nothing, uh, Obama and Abbas pocketed that concession and asked for more and demanded more. And then when Israel didn't give more, Israel was condemned. It doesn't matter that for the first nine and a half months of that vaunted settlement freeze, when Jews were denied our rights to property in an unbelievable slight and trampling, in fact, of our democratic rule of law, civil rights of Jews, property rights of Jews because we're Jewish were denied because we're Jewish in Jerusalem. Because we did that, we were supposed to be supported. We were supposed to show the entire international community, first and foremost, the United States of America, the truth and sincerity of our intentions and our desire for peace. And what did we get? Nine months of the 10 months uh, freeze Mahmoud Abbas refused to even sit down and negotiate. And when he finally came to the table was to try to squeeze out additional concessions. Which concessions does he consistently demand? That we release bloody, offensive, monstrous terrorists from prison. Terrorists who murdered our children. Terrorists who murdered our parents. Terrorists who murdered our husbands and wives from, t from prison because they were murdered because they are Jews. That is what he demanded. He demanded that from us. And unfortunately, the Obama administration supported that demand. And then they blamed Israel for not being sincere in our desire to make peace because we said, finally, enough is enough, and we will not go through with a third tranche of prisoner releases of Israeli citizens, of Arab, of Arab ethnicity, who murdered us because we are Jews. This we will not do, because why? Because, and we would have done it, but we didn't do it, because Mahmoud Abbas refused to negotiate with us. He refused to make one concession, and still today we see, still today we see, we make concession after concession after concession, things that harm us, things that endanger the lives of Israeli citizens. Releasing terrorists from prison causes the murder of additional Jews. And we know this. We have statistical data to show it. The recidivism rate of terrorists who we, re who we release from prison at the behest of the U.S. government uh, in accordance with the demands of our supposed negotiating partners, the moderate Palestinian leadership. Jews have been killed. What is a Jewish life worth? Enough is enough. We never get credibility for showing our sincerity for peace. We get killed for showing our sincerity to peace. And I just want to add, I just want to add, I don't think, I don't believe, and I don't believe it as a Jew, I do not believe that it is the responsibility of the Jewish people to be the only true Christians in the world and to constantly be giving our other cheek. I don't. I don't think that that is our responsibility. Our responsibility to our people and our responsibility to our future is to not give the other cheek. It is to say, excuse me, but you cheated me once. Shame on me. Shame on you. You cheat me twice. Shame on me. I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to my people. My responsibility is to my people is to secure our lives first and foremost, and then we can move out and see whether we can talk. But the entire two-state formula is based upon this notion that Israel is culpable, that Israel is guilty, 
that it's our fault there's no peace when we're looking at people who are preaching to their children that they should murder ours, that they should murder our children. This is what they are preaching to their children. This is what they are teaching their children everywhere. And yet we're the ones who are supposed to be making concessions. I say no. Prime Minister Netanyahu has also said no because the guiding concept of his two-state formula is reciprocity. You want us to make concessions to you, you show good faith. You make concessions to us, stop the incitement to genocide. Stop the glorification of the murderers of our people. And when you do that, we can sit down and chat. So far, 22 years of this nonsense, and nobody has told the Palestinian people that Israel is just, that Jews are just, that they should make peace with us. Thank you.